So why do so many startups fail in the electric skateboard industry? It's a topic that really interests me. I want to get to the bottom of this. Inertion, Boosted, Inboard, Marbell, Starry, Z Boards, Olin, Unique, Pulse, Bubblegum Boards, Altered Skate, Unique, Nar Boards, X Skate, and Long Haired Boy Electric Skateboards. Do you know any other electric skateboard startups that have failed? Write in the comments, let me know. So obviously out of those 14 different brands that I just mentioned, they're all different size companies. Some were massive, like Boosted, some were quite small, but there was one common denominator between them. They all tried to make a complete electric skateboard and now they don't. So what's going on? Is there some kind of X factor here, some thing that's just causing them all to fall over. I'm going to use this hype chart to illustrate my ideas and guide you through my thoughts. On the left, you can see a scale of expectations and at the bottom is a scale for time. The journey begins in the bottom left hand corner. Please pause the video now and read the descriptions of the different segments of the hype cycle to better understand how it works. Okay, so we have the technology trigger. For me, that was Back to the Future, the hoverboard, quite a while after that, 10 years later, actually making an electric skateboard. That was X Skate. And the DIY electric skateboard scene. And then boosted boards. That we bought them at a toy store. These are from remote control airplanes. Going to show you how to build your own electric skateboard. It's really quick, it's really easy, and with the parts in front of me here, you'll be able to do it at home in a matter of minutes. And then Kickstarter. Kickstarter was huge for electric skateboards. This dude has a marble. This is a marble, right? Yeah, it is. Wow. So Marble Skateboards was kickstarted, and then, I don't know what happened. My name is Ryan, I'm the uh, co-founder of Inboard Sports. It brought the dreamers and the risk takers together and that equaled innovation. It gave them a platform to raise the necessary funds to put their ideas into reality. 2015 saw direct drive motors coming onto the market. Pretty much no one thought you could actually move anyone on an electric skateboard with direct drive Three, motors. Two, and one, Turns go. out you can. And there was a lot of promises made Marketing gets out of hand. A lot of hype builds. All the different brands that came onto the scene back then, they're all competing against each other. The Jed board. Really looking forward to this one. This is so fucking awesome, I love it. Wheels are good. If this is the number one Christmas present next year. Uh. Mate, I want one. How awesome it really is. The battery is good. Is to make good electric skateboards. Let's the lightest board on the market. The enclosures are good. Good job, inboard. This is great. It's also the thinnest board on the market. It's insanely good. The ESC is good. Drops and wheels. What else can I say? I mean, they're awesome. It's good. Awesome. It's really good. <laughs> so many cool new things are going on and everyone's excited for the future. But there's a problem. This is an extremely complex engineering challenge. No one really fully understood that at the beginning. At least maybe people thought things would progress faster and maybe people thought there wouldn't be problems, but alas, there were. Boosted battery was one of the biggest issues that surprised a lot of people when they recalled a lot of their products and they stopped shipping products and they told people not to ride their products. And this is boosted. Everyone's like, man, these guys have got millions of investment. They've got great engineers, how can this happen? Getting these little problems solved is so challenging. Just getting trucks that don't snap, like normal skateboard trucks. Turns out they're not really that good for electric skateboarding. There's so many challenges and it was really the point where people started to become a little bit disillusioned. Average e-skate consumers are notoriously harsh critics. They focus on the worst 
and ignore the best. One of our wheels came over tightened and the board's left wheel pulley wobbles slightly. There's no way to turn the board on or off from the remote. There's a separate on switch for the board and a separate on switch and off switch for the remote. If you lose it, to replace this is 109 US dollars. This negative energy builds up and what happens during this time is these companies, the innovators, they de-risk. They have to decide how to do things smarter. They take less risks. They don't want to lose. But the problem with that is that actually doesn't satisfy the consumers that much e either. People are like, when Boosted brought out their new range of boards, and everyone was losing their minds. Like, why isn't there better technology? Because one of our goals was to make the grippiest wheel possible. So I don't feel like it has as much grip on these wheels as the orangutans. These wheels, uh, the durometer might be a little harder. Yeah, Boosted uses loaded decks. Okay, okay, okay. I need to butt in. This is not meant to be a Boosted Boards case study. This is a video about market trends. It's about risk takers and innovators and how they sell people an awesome dream of the future. They managed to build up a lot of hype and get a lot of people excited. They raise the money required through Kickstarter or Indiegogo and they bring their dreams into reality. However, somewhere along this journey, things go from awesome, exciting, hype, good, to uh, this is really hard. There's an engineering problem or a manufacturing problem and it impacts the hype, the sentiment, starts turning negative. Their once loyal fan base gets disillusioned and starts looking for alternative options. Competitors can appear and they take the best ideas and capitalize on those and they also learn what not to do and how not to make the same mistakes. And in some cases, these copycats execute their plans better and end up making better products, more innovative products, lower cost products. They solve the problems that caused the people before them to fall over. All the good ideas flow downstream in to the next businesses, the next risk takers and innovators who start up. And it's good, it's, it's a competitive market and it means consumers hopefully get better and better products and technology at a better price and things keep moving on. So, okay, let's get back into it and I wanna go into a few more points. Well, at least Boosted used to use loaded decks. So can you see a trend forming here? A technology trigger, a new idea, risk takers and innovators start up and fail. New players in the market take the best ideas and capitalize on them and perhaps they fall over too and the cycle repeats over and over again. The technology hype cycle happens on both micro and macro levels but the good news is shit doesn't stick. All the best ideas bubble up to the top. The most innovative and efficient companies survive and the weaker companies just fail. This is why you will see new boutique brands coming into the scene. They're small, they're efficient, they've got awesome ideas. The question is, can they get from startup to fully fledged company without failing in that first five year period? Okay, so let's just recap a few key points. Consumers will keep leaning towards the best technology and the best value, if they can buy that from China perhaps, they will do it. Capitalism is a powerful market force that's driving innovation and driving our industry forward. And if you've been paying attention, you will notice that the China brands are growing stronger and stronger. I know some of these company owners personally, and they are smart business people. They know what works, they know what to invest in, they minimize the risk and they capitalize on the upside when possible. X-Way now uses their own in-house trucks, which they call Trist. Some people were concerned that since X-Way is not a skate truck company, that their trucks might not be as good as the Seismic Aeons, but the Trist is actually really good. 
there's no slop, they carve well even at 45 degrees, and they look freaking awesome. The Trist should actually be considered a premium truck. For example, Paris has the V3 as their budget truck and the Savant as their premium truck. The difference is in how they are manufactured. One is cast while the other is forced. Forced trucks are stronger than cast trucks. The Trist is a forced truck for strength and refined with CNC machining for precision. No other board around the same price has trucks like these. Key point here is to survive this game, you need to keep innovating, you need to be super efficient, otherwise you'll just get eaten up. The good news is we are moving forward quickly. Disillusionment doesn't last. Consumers are getting more and more knowledgeable and I personally think we're heading up that slope of enlightenment already. Okay, so what does all this mean? Let's try to wrap it up into a meaningful little piece of information so you can leave this video feeling like maybe you know something more than you did before you started. The best technology prevails. Things like the Vesk and the Fockbox brands are really something that I believe are going to be around for years to come. People want that kind of technology in their electric skateboards. The ability to be able to customize your ride and get the power where you want it or lower it down if you don't for certain levels of skill, that's important. And I can tell you firsthand that there are definitely a few of the Chinese brands now looking at implementing VESC-based motor controllers into their offerings. That's a key piece of technology that will be around for years to come. Sadly, there will be more companies that fail. And I hate to say it, another fellow Aussie brand, Evolve. They have some targets on their back. Now, I fully expect that Evolve are worried in the wake of booster boards going down the pan. The same thing could happen to Evolve skateboards. He's an Evolve rider, he's gonna be completely for Evolve. I, on the other side, I have a prototype here. Some of these Chinese brands at the moment are gunning for them. They're doing everything Evolve's doing. The only thing that they're not doing and that they don't have yet is the servicing network and the distribution network. So Evolve, I think they still have a market advantage because of that, but they really have to drive forward with their innovations and their developments. They have not long ago released new products, which is awesome, but they just need to be a little bit quicker with their innovations. They probably need to adopt the VESC based motor controllers and step it up in terms of user customizations and performance and just, yeah, they need to get to that level. Otherwise they will fall behind. My guess is there'll be one or two key players left in a few years from now. I'm talking the market leaders, the big boys that have taken control of the market and are dominating in terms of units sold and technology and value and quality. There'll be one or two and they'll probably be Chinese based brands. Uh, if you look at what X-Way's done, over just the last 12 months alone. If you're deciding between the X-Way Flex and a boosted board, I think you just gotta look at the price. Even if they cost the same, I would still choose the X-Way. This is what's coming out. This year, boosted boards has some serious problems. Um, they probably killed boosted and, you know, they're doing a great job. They're learning quickly, they're delivering, and they're innovating rapidly. The good news, guys, is the winner here is you. Strap on your helmet, zip up your lazy rolling armored hoodie. It's gonna be one hell of a ride. The technology, the products, they're gonna keep getting better. We're gonna keep benefiting from them. Um, I'm excited for the future. I'm looking forward to what's next, what the boutique brands can do, what the big players will do, how the technology will transition from these niche little boutiques into the big players. It's exciting. So thank you for watching. Please leave your comments. I'm not sure if this kind of format works for YouTube. I just, I've got ideas in my head. I wanna share them. I, I just, I enjoy this. I'm still passionate about electric skateboarding and 
Hopefully I can contribute something and make your day a little bit more enjoyable. Thanks for watching, see you later.